Hello, everyone, and welcome to our class here today. My name is Morgan Heitzma with Scott Leroy Marketing, and today we're going to be talking about our DocuSign. Today's class is going to be DocuSign 101, how to kind of connect and set up your KW DocuSign to be connected with your KW command, and where to kind of find and start utilizing it. Uh, there is going to be a part two to this DocuSign class. So if we didn't catch everything, um, if we don't cover everything here today, just know that there's going to be a part two uh, for some additional uh, tips and tricks and, and useful tools within that uh, DocuSign platform. So uh, without further ado, before we jump in here today, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, this class is going to be recorded here today. So uh, at the end of class here, uh, we are going to throw this up on our YouTube page. Uh, it does take about 24 hours or so for it to process and upload, but I'm going to throw the YouTube link in the chat box down below for you. And with that being said, uh, if you have any questions throughout today's training here, please feel free to use this uh, chat box down below. Uh, I'll do my best to stop throughout the training and help uh, address any additional questions. Uh, by chance, if I miss any questions in real time, uh, I'm going to stay a few minutes afterwards to uh, help answer those. By chance, if I just don't know the uh, the question off the top of my head, right? Uh, please feel free to reach out to us at support at scottleroymarketing.com. Uh, we should have additional uh, resources uh, for you to send your way uh, with any kind of uh, KW issues or questions you may have. All right, so without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our KW login page here. Um, I'm going to use Scott's KW command for our uh, class here today, uh, but uh, to get to this page right here, it's going to be agent.kw.com. Uh, if by chance this is your very first time signing into this platform right here, uh, just know that we do not add the www at the beginning here. It's just strictly agent.kw.com. And it should greet you to this uh, the sign-in page right here where it takes your KW username and password. Your KW username is generally the first letter of your first name, followed by your last name. If it's a pretty common combination like John Smith, you may have a number associated at the end here. Now, um, again, once we sign into this KW command platform, we're gonna be greeted with our KW command homepage. It's gonna look something similar to this right here. And I know my screen's a little large, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit here for us so we can kind of see this a little bit easier. There we go. And um, within this KW command um, homepage here, uh, the left-hand side is going to be all, uh, all of our navigational icons, so all the different pages that we can navigate within our KW command platform. If we go ahead and click on the red KW square on the top left-hand corner right here, It'll open up these titles so we can kind of read them a little bit easier at a glance. So uh, primarily where our DocuSign is going to live within our KW command platform is going to be inside of our opportunities page right here. So it's going to look like two people shaking hands right here. This is where your transactions will take place. And this is where your DocuSign is really going to shine to be able to pull in those signatures, those signed documents to submit to your market center uh, for compliance. So as we're taking a look right here, uh, we're going to go ahead and before we make our way to our opportunities to check out our DocuSign, we want to make sure that it is indeed set up and connected within our KW command platform. So before we make our way over here, we're going to, uh, take a look at the top right hand corner with our name and our headshot. We'll go ahead and give our name a click and it should open up a drop down uh, with a number of different options for us. We're going to be strictly looking for the settings option right here. It's going to be third from the bottom. And once we go ahead and give that a click, it should bring us over to our KW command settings page. Now, inside of our KW command settings page, um, the left-hand side, the skinny little section is going to be where you kind of find primarily all of your different uh, actual settings. And on the right-hand side right here um, are a number of third-party platforms that if you're already current, currently utilizing these, you can go ahead and connect them with your KW command. So 
For example, I have a Facebook that I currently utilize. Uh, so I went ahead and connected that with my, fa with my uh, command here. Um, however, I do not utilize Twitter, so I did not connect that. So you'll have a number of different uh, applications here that you can scroll through and connect. There's going to be one connection that's going to be a little bit different than the rest. So all of these are pretty much, if you have it, you can connect it. But if we scroll all the way up to the top here, your DocuSign right here is going to be um, a special, unique connection. Uh, this is the only way that we can kind of initiate a KW branded DocuSign account. So for example, if I went to DocuSign.com, I would not be able to create a KW branded DocuSign account uh, through DocuSign.com. Uh, the reason for this is the KW branded DocuSign accounts will have something called uh, DocuSign Rooms that's just not created or not utilized with a standard DocuSign account. So um, we do not want to sign up for our DocuSign through DocuSign.com. We actually want to sign up for it through our command settings right here. And you'll see that mine's already kind of connected here. Uh, we can identify that by the email that it's associated with, as well as this disconnect account button right here. If it's not connected yet, you'll have a blue connect account uh, button. So this is currently connected, but we're gonna disconnect this here and we're gonna start from scratch. Clicking disconnect here, you may uh, first initially find your DocuSign connection underneath the section digital signatures and transactions so it may not be up here at the very top at the beginning uh, this is strictly for all the apps that are currently connected so that's our first section right here but if we scroll down a little bit further here you'll see that digital signature and transaction section and here it'll house your DocuSign this is what it looks like when a DocuSign is not quite connected just yet uh, we'll see that blue connect account button we'll give that a click right here and uh, we should have a pop-up that appears um, on, on this next um, uh, page here. Um, if you don't see this pop-up, chances are uh, we've seen issues with pop-ups appearing uh, when using the web browsers, uh, Microsoft Edge and Internet Explorer, uh, as well as Safari. So um, if you're not getting these pop-ups to kind of um, allow you to um, uh, proceed through the uh, setup, uh, try utilizing the Google Chrome browser or um, Firefox and see if that might help um, alleviate this. Um, as we're taking a look right here, within this pop-up, we'll have our first name, last name, and our email right here. Uh, if we think in the world of logins, uh, we're kind of missing a, a very important uh, piece, which is our password. Uh, once we fill in our first, last, and email right here and click send registration email, DocuSign is going to send an email to you to this address. Um, and when you click on that email, it's going to say, click here to set up a password as well as a security question. So think of this as the first uh, half of your setup when it comes to connecting your DocuSign. The second half is going to come in the form of an email uh, to you uh, from DocuSign.com. Now, um, before I proceed forward here, if you type in an email address and you hit send registration email and you get this ugly red error down below here, uh, what this typically means is that this email address is already connected to a non-KW branded account right here. So, uh, so we may want to double check. Unfortunately, if, if this email is already associated with a personal or a paid DocuSign account, it'll be incompatible to be utilized for the KW branded account. I hope that makes sense. Um, as we're taking a look right here, since I already have an account that's not Scott's right here, um, if you somehow get disconnected from your DocuSign, or if you just wanted to disconnect and reconnect, say something was a, a little wonky on the back end there, uh, we can simply click the log in here button, and this will by bypass sending that registration email. I already have an email associated here that's set up. So I click in my email address and log into DocuSign. It should give me another pop-up here to, to fill in my password and uh, authorize the connection. So here's that pop-up right here. 
we'll fill in our password. And once that, when, once that connection is finalized, you'll see a, a banner up here that says DocuSign is now ready and can be found within your opportunity. Uh, you'll also see that it moved all the way back up top here uh, to our connected app. So this would be the very first portion in, um, in making sure that everything is set up smoothly when you do go through and, and create opportunities and, and start creating documents to send out to your clients. So. Uh, setting this up first um, is going to be that first important piece. Now, um, in terms of um, uh, creating an opportunity, and I'm not sure if any of you were with me last week, but last week we had our uh, opportunities class. There's an amazing recording, uh, as well as additional uh, live training opportunities here in, uh, in the coming future. So um, so with, within that being said, I'm going to kind of quickly breeze past the opportunities section, but I still kind of want to kind of uh, let you guys know that there's going to be two additional uh, setup steps. Uh, one's going to be creating a contact because again, everything within KW command will draw from the contact. To which contact do you want to create an opportunity for? So I'm just going to go ahead and type in my own name here. And as you see, we'll first need to create a contact. And again, we do have a full contacts class uh, to show you how to create contacts, tags, as well as manage your database. Um, but I already have a contact here created. And within this contact here, um, we'll next need to be able to create an opportunity. And we can create an opportunity one of two ways. We can create it on the individual contact right here uh, through the opportunities tab. So as you see, I have a few different opportunities here. Uh, or we can actually click on the red KW square and click on our actual opportunities page. So I'm going to use myself since I already have uh, a contact uh, for me in my database here. I'm going to utilize that as the a contact that we've entered here today. So I have a contact. I've connected my uh, KW DocuSign account. Uh, next would be creating this opportunity right here, and we're going to create, a, create a, a fresh opportunity from scratch. So I'll click create opportunity on the top right hand corner here. Sure. How we got to our opportunities page. Um, again, just clicking on the red KW square on the top left hand corner, and then it's going to be right here on the left hand side. It's going to look like two people shaking hands. And once we uh once we're inside of our opportunities page right here we can click on create opportunity and i'll go a little bit slower here for you guys as well um creating an opportunity uh first again you'll have to uh, choose your market center uh for most of you you may only have one market center but for those of you who um, are duly licensed or uh, an expansion or just transferring from one kw market center to another you may have an additional market center that you can toggle between. Uh, this is super important because uh, once we uh, click on a market center and create the opportunity, we will be unable to change this um, here um, in the future. Now, one other thing that I wanted to uh, touch on here as well, since we are talking about DocuSign, uh, this is the first... Um, First thing that we select uh, when creating an, our, our opportunity that will determine which DocuSign room that we um, are creating. So if I choose a market center, for example, if I choose a uh, Houston Premier, um, what this will do when I create an opportunity is this will start to connect it to Houston Premier Market Center. And this will, and when I go to create a DocuSign room, uh, this will open up a DocuSign room with the Houston Premier Market Center. So uh, this is the first start of that solidif uh, solidified um, uh, option when it comes to uh, choosing your, your DocuSign room. So um, choosing this right here, I'll choose Houston Premier. Our opportunity type, we're just gonna choose a, we're gonna choose a buyer for today. Um, our client is going to be Morgan. And keep in mind, even though I'm the one training today, we're inside of Scott's account. So Scott's going to be the agent. I am going to be the client. So we'll give that a click here. And again, if I am going a little quick on creating this opportunity, just know uh, last week we had an amazing opportunity class that, uh, that we can send you the link for. Um, again, cultivate 
it's going to appear in the bottom section right here. So that's perfectly fine. I'm going to uh, create this opportunity. And you'll see it within that cultivate section right here. So there's that Morgan Heights my buyer opportunity that we created. Um, and once we have an opportunity and once we've connected our DocuSign account, we can actually jump into this opportunity right here and we can start to take a look at all the information. So um, slowing down a little bit more here inside of your opportunity from this point onward, everything that we're doing is going to be for this Morgan Heights my buyer right here. So we don't have to worry about uploading any kind of forms or documents or getting confused with any other transactions once we actually enter the opportunity. The left hand side is going to be all of the information that we have filled in to create the opportunity here. So the contact name, contact uh, the opportunity name, uh, which side of the transaction they're on, um, and which, which side of the phase they're on. If I scroll down here a little bit more, uh, you'll also be able to see which market center your, um, your opportunity is under as well. So again, this is for, for those of you who have transferred or for those of you who are um, participating in more than one market center, uh, this will be able to show you which market center this opportunity is for. Also show you which uh, DocuSign room we're connected as well. So once I see this right here, I have a buyer, so I don't have any property information right here just yet, uh, but we'll get back to this here in a moment. Uh, scrolling through our menu option right here from details, buyer profile, documents, uh, offers, commissions, notes, and timeline, we're going to be um, taking a look at this document section right here. This is going to be primarily where um, this is going to be primarily where your DocuSign is. So giving this a click right here, um, the first thing that we may notice is, um, is just kind of like a blank screen right here. Uh, there's not really too much going on, but we have to kind of select a few options here first. So the first option on the left-hand side is going to be pick a checklist type. Is this a um, commercial location? Is this a residential property? Uh, what type of opportunity or transaction is this? So we'll give this a click right here. You'll see residential, new construction, commercial, so on and so forth. And one thing that I really like to stress at this, at this point is my checklist type may look different than yours. Um, from this point onward in the documents section right here, your principal reviewing broker in your market center is the one that creates these checklist types. So Mine may look different than yours, and that's perfectly okay. So taking a look at this checklist type right here, I'm going to click on uh, residential. And once I click on residential, it gave me three different sections, consultation, under contract, and closed, which similarly reflects um, uh, which, which times in a transaction you would be sending documents out, right? So consultation, it looks like there's no uh, documents that are required. There may be some for you. Um, under contract here, we'll give that a click. Then we start to kind of see these, um, these forms that your market center is requesting. Um, when we go to take a look at pulling in these forms, we can, um, we can pull in a PDF here. So we can pull in a PDF from our computer, uh, but there's also a couple other options as well. So we only have attached files from our computer so far. Uh, once we attach a file, your submit to Market Center will um, not be grayed out anymore, and we can submit this file to the Market Center to be um, approved. DocuSign really comes into play in a fantastic way um, right here at this, at this point. Um, right next to Submit to Market Center, you'll have a dark gray button that says Start a Transaction. And you'll only see this dark gray button if your DocuSign is successfully connected in your settings here. So if you're not seeing this button here, um, chances are we may need to go back and just take a look at reconnecting our settings here. But if, you're, if you see this, this means your DocuSign is successfully connected. We can give this a click and we can select our DocuSign here. It should give us a new tab here. And depending on how long it's been since we signed in, it may ask us to sign in one more time and then pull us into this DocuSign room right here. So 
really cool to be able to um, to automatically have that populate uh, if it's not been a long time since you signed in. Um, one thing also to keep in mind, I'm going back over to this opportunity here, is once you click on that dark gray start a transaction button, it'll go ahead and create that DocuSign room and connect it to the opportunity. It'll also change this button to a white button that says go to transaction. Um, so the hint here is dark gray means that your DocuSign is connected, but you have not created a room for this opportunity yet. White means that you have uh, successfully connected a DocuSign room uh, to this opportunity. So now that this is linked right here, uh, another thing that we uh, notice is right below here, we, before we had the option to only attach files from our computer. But now we have the opportunity to attach files from DocuSign. So giving that a click here, these options are still grayed out, so we're not able to really pull anything just yet. Uh, there's going to be one additional drop down right here uh, called our working folders. So if we give this a click right here, each DocuSign room that's created automatically will have one folder called room docs. If we give that a click right here. I'm going to close this up. This is where uh, that one folder is. Um, now in DocuSign 201, or if we have a little bit more time here today, I'll show you how to create a few more uh, folders here. So you can have a room docs, like a catch-all folder, and a sign docs for all of your signed, sealed, delivered documents. Um, but you do have the ability to add uh, multiple different folders here. They start you out with one. Once you select room docs, your dropdown will become available. now. Since I don't have any signed documents yet, it doesn't pull anything in. Now, one thing also to, uh, to stress on is uh, you may not have forms that automatically pull into your DocuSign here. So I don't want you to think that, uh, that right when you create a DocuSign room, you'll have forms that pull in. So this is strictly uh, something that the Market Center set up. So, um, so again, um, how we actually pull forms into our DocuSign room um, is going to be through this blue add button right here. So. For example, let's go ahead and remove these because chances are uh, you may have a blank. You may have a blank room that looks something similar to this. And then again, that blue add button right here is where we go to pull um, forms in. But, um, but as we are taking a look right here. Um, we're going to first need to, much like how we did with our DocuSign connecting it to command, we're going to need to connect our back end forms to be able to pull them into our DocuSign room. So how we do this is inside of our DocuSign rooms. And again, we got there by clicking on go to transaction inside of our opportunity. Once we go to our room right here on the top right hand corner, there should be a KW branded logo. This indicates that you are indeed in the correct uh, DocuSign. But right next to that logo, if we click on our headshot or our initials right here, um, it should give us a drop down in which we can see our preferences right here. Clicking on preferences you'll have a few different options. So let me, again, zoom this up just a little bit for us. Um, we're actually going to be looking for the integration section right here on the left-hand side. So again, uh, went to the rooms, clicked on our initial preferences, and then integration. And this is going to be where we can connect our board forms as well as our market center forms. So um, again, uh, you may have a blue button right here that says add provider. Uh, you may not see your company forms just yet, but when we click on that blue Ad Provider button, uh, you may see this pop up right here. Um, first and foremost, let's go ahead and click on this bottom link right here uh, that says Continue to Company Forms Without Validation. Um, this allows you, if you give that a click, it allows you to pull in your Market Center specific form. And it should also look something like this right here once you connect it. The second thing is when we click add provider right here is you have a number of different um, MLSs right here. So you have the Realtor Association, 
uh, Northwest Multiple Listing Service, Georgia Realtors, the OREF, California Association of Realtors, and Texas Realtors. Um, so as we're taking a look at all of these right here, um, for the most part, if you belong to the Realtors Association, we'll just give this a click right here. You'll enter your NRDS ID, your last name, as well as your association. And then we can go ahead and click on validate. And uh, once we click on validate right here, it should pull in your board forms right here. Um, again, if you belong to more than one board, um, if you go ahead and again, just connect your NRDS ID, it should pull in both of those boards for you. Now there's one last section that I wanted to, um, to address in here, um, and that is for all of you who are using zip forms. Uh, if you're using zip forms, uh, which I, I believe California pri primarily is using zip forms, um, if you're using zip forms, um, it's actually going to be up top here for your connection. So uh, we'll go ahead and give this a click, Oops, this arrow right here a click. Uh, we'll enter in our zip forms username and password. And then once we connect that, that should give us the ability to pull in our transactions folders as well as our zip forms library, like our forms from our zip forms libraries. So you'll have um, a couple different options there. So truthfully, what they're doing here is they're, they're creating DocuSign room, rooms as that one-stop shop for you to pull in all of your documents, work on them, send them out to get signatures. They're going to come back here. And then right when they're signed, sealed, and delivered, all pretty, we're going to go ahead and just upload them to the market center and submit. <clears throat> All right, taking another look at this document section right here. Again, um, once we connect our market center forms and our board forms, clicking this add button right here and then clicking on DocuSign forms is where we go to pull in these forms of, to add and start working on. So, um, so again, let me go ahead and add one more. So click the add button, DocuSign forms right here. I can scroll through all of the different libraries that I'm looking for. You may not have as many as I have right here, but, um, but you should have uh, all the ones that you need. Um, and again, we'll just go ahead and select one that we want. If we're not sure exactly what this is, this form is right here, we can click on this uh, eyeball right here to preview it. And this can give us a good indication on what this form is. And then we can add it to our room. So you see now I have three different um, three different forms here, and um, and as we take a look right here, they don't don't really give us a preview. Um, again, as they're being pulled in, I may be able to refresh. They may give us a, a, a picture view. There we go. But right below that should give us a good indication on what this document is, the date that we pulled it in, as well as uh, some additional context information who pulled in this document. Uh, which was me. Now, um, one big indicator right here on our DocuSign forms is there's going to be an image right here, a little icon that says form. Let me zoom up a little bit more for us so we can kind of see that. See this little image right here that says form right next to these, uh, these documents here? Uh, this lets us know that each one of these specific documents right here uh, is what we call a DocuSign power form. And, um, and DocuSign power forms allow us to be able to pull in information automatically based off of the details tab in our DocuSign room. So, and again, it only can be a power form right here that has that blue title. So <laughs> I'm gonna pull in this, uh, this coloring, the coloring contest PDF right here that I have. And once I pull this in, you'll see that, again, it's two different icons. So if I pull this PDF in, this will not be a branded power form, which, which means it will not be able to automatically pull in information from the details tab right here. So again, it's good to know which, which forms um, are which types, uh, because again, some allow you to, to have a special kind of tools and access, and some just is a standard document. So um, taking a look right here, I have, um, let's click on this one. Um, 
I believe I've entered in Scott Leroy as the buyer's agent and Morgan Heitzma as the buyer within our, our opportunity here. So it should pull in similar information when it comes to um, these forms right here. So it doesn't quite look like there's a buyer or seller info on here. If we can view this one really quick. And uh, what else is really cool about these power forms is uh, when you pull this power form up, even if it's from like say zip forms, um, you can pull it into DocuSign and you can still fill in this form. So, um, so when you're ready to send it out for signatures, again, it's that one-stop shop for you to be able to auto-populate that information. I'm gonna try and pull in maybe one more form here just so we can kind of see that, uh, that ability to, to auto auto grab that information pulling a couple more here um and a good good question can you add trebb aps forms into docusign you should be able to um to pull in forms from your computer you should be able to pull in forms from um, other locations like Google Drive or your Dropbox, um, as, as well as the forms that are readily available for your uh, market center and, um, and board. So, uh, so you have the ability to kind of use a couple different things. Like this one right here, this one is just strictly a coloring, a kid's coloring contest right here. So um, pulling that in, it should allow you to be able to pull in a number of different uh, documents. Um, now, again, I'm not 100% sure if any of these pulled through or if any of these had specific information, but, uh, but we'll try one more time. Gosh. Um, okay. So, uh, so... I'm just pulling in the wrong forms here, but what it should do is it should pull in from the details tab right here, just in order to kind of uh, help save a little bit of time here so I don't pull in just other random forms here. Um, your details tab right here, uh, it'll pull in all this information. So right here you have seller one um, on the right hand side, and then it goes to seller two, and then it goes to listing agent one, listing agent two, and then it goes to buyer one. And again, because, um, because we um, created the buyer as Morgan Heitzma as our opportunity right here, uh, that's what pulled through and auto-populated on the buyer side. So Morgan Heitzma, an email right here, that's all we, all we created for the contact. And then the buyer's agent is going to be Scott because we're underneath Scott's uh, KW command. So you see Scott has a little bit more information pre-populated right here. Um, this allows us to take this information right here um, and again apply it to your power form so you don't have to keep adding this information over and over and over again uh, to your individual forms right here um, if you wanted to edit this right here uh, it's going to be this blue edit button and then once we give that a click it'll open up all these different sections right here for us to be able to adjust and then once we um, once we want once we uh, like the way that it looks, so let me just add Morgan J. Heitzma right here. I'm going to hit save, and then that allows us to be able to kind of adjust this accordingly. So when we go back to our documents, it'll say Morgan J. Heitzma instead of Morgan Heitzma. Um, so uh, again, adjust any of these accordingly. Once you find uh, a property address and property location, this thing again is pretty cool because um, you see we don't have a, a location here for this buyer just yet. We can edit this in within our, our DocuSign, but I'm actually going to um, edit this in uh, on my opportunity. That way it's going to feed into that DocuSign. So going back to this details tab right here, you'll see everything says synced now because we connected that DocuSign room. And anything that we need to make any edits or adjustments on, um, we can just resync that transaction and it'll change it accordingly. So 
Uh, you'll see, for example, opportunity name is Morgan Heights my buyer. Morgan Heights my buyer right here. If I click this edit pencil right here and maybe say Morgan Heights my second buyer and hit save right here. So it says Morgan Heights my second buyer. I can resync this transaction and hit update. And then when I go back to my DocuSign room and hit refresh right here, it, it should pre-populate that as uh, Morgan Heights my second buyer. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm not 100% sure if there's a, a technical, um, <laughs> technical uh, glitch within uh, DocuSign right now that's being a little bit slower than it should be, but... Um, but yeah, it should update all of this accordingly. So let's try one more time and find, find a property for this buyer right here. So, um, I'm just going to type in one, two, three main street as a property. I'm going to hit save right here. So we pre-populated this information for this, uh, buyer right here and we'll update. As you see, all of these are being edited currently within your, uh, your DocuSign room right here. We'll back out of this. We'll refresh this one more time. And you'll see that it is all synced up together. So the editing means that it was just writing onto that uh, DocuSign details tab right here. So um, again, jumping back over to this details tab, we should have listing information. So there we go. So as you see, it has 123 Main Street, has all that listing info that we uh, synced up with our KW command opportunity. Uh, the reason why I'm showing you this, right, is if you ever run into an issue where there's information that's auto-populating incorrectly, um, it may first be best to check within your opportunity. Um, if everything looks correct within your opportunity, the second thing may be best to check your details tab within your, your DocuSign. So, um, so they kind of feed as steps towards each other. Now, um, now, as we're kind of taking a look here, um, we're gonna go back over to our documents section right here. Our documents, we have a few different documents that we auto-populated. Let me get this, uh, this PDF out of the way here. And um, taking a look at all of this information that, uh, that came through, if we um, select any forms that we need to send out to get signatures, say this form has already been filled out and completed, I'm ready to co I'm re ready to send this off for signatures, and we can click on this checkbox on the top left of these documents right here. And what this will do is this will open up a, a new menu option here for us. It'll only appear when there's a check uh, a document checked. So selecting a document right here when we see this uh, menu. We're going to be looking for the pen in the center section right here that says create envelope. And once we give that a click, um, this is a new update. So for those of you who are used to the old DocuSign, we didn't quite have this pop up here, but this is a cool auto populated a feature that allows you to be able to select which information that you want to auto populate, AKA who am I sending this to? Um, if you want to manually enter that in, um, I know that I like to always see the uh, the work that's being entered in. Uh, you can uh, you can just click on continue here. If you want these to pre-populate for you, like seller one, seller two, you can um, you can select all or simply just select one if you so choose. So I'm going to click continue right here. I'm going to only select seller one. And on the next page, it should be. Um, creating our email, basically the send to, who are we gonna send it to, and any additional context within that email that we would like to send over as well. So the first thing that we have is add documents. So it already pulled in that one document that I selected on that checkbox within our DocuSign room. Um, but we also have one other section right here that says upload. If we click on this upload here, we can browse for more uh, documents that we can upload from our computer. We can upload more documents from our room, um, as well as some other features as well, like Google Drive, Dropbox, and so on. If I click add rooms documents, 
this will pull in all those other documents that we were taking a look at. So say I forgot to add this one and we can just add a secondary uh, form here. Now, as we take a look, we pulled in two forms here. So these are going to be um, basically our documents. And this is, this is called an envelope inside of DocuSign. Um, I like to kind of pair this up with, um, you know, a physical mail that you, we put in an envelope and we mail in the mailbox. This is um, very much like that, only it's, it's a digital version. So they call it an envelope here, but truthfully, it's going to be an email. So seller one, since we only selected seller one to be um, sent to, uh, it only gave us one option. But we can also select add recipient right here and add as many additional recipients as we need to. Um, each signer on the DocuSign form will have its own unique color. Signer one is typically always that DocuSign yellow slash orange. Um, but then as, as signers start to be added to this uh, form right here, uh, they'll have their own unique color in order to be able to, to identify them on the form a little bit easier. Now I'm just going to choose uh, seller one and seller two, right? I'm actually going to, um, I'm going to delete seller one. I'm just going to have two random individuals here that need to sign. Um, first is going to be myself and the second is going to be Scott. Scott Leroy. And when I type in the name right here, it'll search through that information and um, it'll pull in that info uh, that corresponds with the name. So right here, um, the way that we view this, if this is your first time sending out a DocuSign, uh, the first top person is going to be signer number one. Um, and then the, the second one is going to be signer number two. Uh, the reason why I'm focusing on this right here uh, is because if I click on this set signing order right here, you'll see the number one and the number two indicating this will be the first person. And then once this person signs, this will be the second person. To sign. Sometimes when we work with technology, sometimes things don't quite work the way that we intend them to, right? Like, you know, we're dealing with uh, zeros and ones and sometimes uh, they, they work in, in mysterious ways. Um, this is one of those things that we may want to kind of focus and pay attention to if we're adding more than one signer to a form and a document right here. If I add Morgan as signer number one, Scott as signer number two, and say, oh, actually I need Scott to be signer number one. So let me move Scott up over here to be signer number one. As we take a look right here, there is a small little technical glitch that um, turned both of these individuals into signer number one. It also scooted Scott down, down back below on the bottom here. So again, something to keep in mind is we may want to manually add this information in. See, now we have signer number two and signer number three. So we may want to manually add this in to make sure that we're ensuring that this goes in the correct order here, okay? So signer number one, signer number two. So I just manually change that right here. So um, as we scroll down right here, the last portion is going to be, what does your email say? So we got the email subject line, and then we got a message as well. So uh, one thing to keep in mind, DocuSign does a pretty good job of packaging a good email to send to your clients. Basically is a button that says, please click here to start DocuSigning. Uh, they'll, they'll click through and then start uh, adding their signature. So I'm not really going to add anything um, to my message details just because I kind of want to see, uh, show what it kind of looks like um, from that client's point of view. But as we're uh, taking a look here, these are the only three options. Uh, you do have an option to save where you're at right here by clicking this actions on the top right hand corner. We can save and close or we can just discard this. Um, but on the bottom right hand corner here in this orange uh, yellow button, it's going to say next. Once we give this a click, this is where we go to add signatures. So um, there's a lot going on on this page right here, but, uh, but bear with me. It's going to be uh, kind of easy to, to follow along. The first thing that I want to identify is the left-hand side is going to be all of the different tools that you can apply onto this form right here. 
the right hand side is going to be all of the different options for each specific tool. So for example, if I click signature over here and I drag over signature, watch what happens to the right hand side. It creates an option strictly for this one tool right here. Um, so I'm going to hit delete right here. Um, one thing also to note in the center is if we're working with power forms here, you'll see a lot of options where I can add in additional information right here. Uh, fear not, as we see this is gray in the outline right here, your clients will not be able to see or edit this right here. They will only be able to see what you place in these boxes. This is truthfully a last call when it comes to filling in the rest of your form right here before you send it off for signature. If I were to drag signature over right here, you'll see this is orange. This indicates that Morgan Heitzma on the right hand side, this indicates Morgan Heitzma will be able to uh, interact with this tool right here. So Morgan will not be able to interact with the gray line. It will only be able to interact with the orange. Uh, right below Morgan Heitzma right here is required field. Unchecking this and rechecking this gives you the option to choose if this is a optional signature or a required signature. And different tools kind of allow you to have that required field as well. So they can kind of toggle through, they can select, unselect, and so on. Um, we can also toggle Morgan over to Scott Roy. And so when I move, move over to Scott Leroy, it, uh, the signature square turns blue right here. So all of Scott Leroy's um, options are going to be in that blue. Um, as you see right here, the left is all in yellow. So again, we're still kind of interacting as, as Morgan right here. Uh, how to change this is up at the very, very top, you'll have another option that looks very similar to the right here. And this will be... Um, who are who's working on on the signing right now so right now i'm working on um viewing as morgan being the signer if i want to switch over to view as scott being the signer i can go ahead and choose scott up top here and it'll change all of my actions to blue so top left will be for everything the top right will be for each individual item now, there's going to be a couple of other things, too, to, to select. Before I move away from the signature line right here, if you have a signature line selected, there will be four dots uh, to allow you to resize this signature if you so need to. So I'll move this down a little bit smaller. So we have a signature sign right here. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're using um, the signature or any other action uh, quite a bit, we can right-click and copy. They do have a right click and standard paste right here. So again, um, every time I paste, it kind of moves a little bit, a little bit more downward. Uh, but you also have a, a cool feature that allows you to be able to, um, to paste in a specific location. So if I wanted to right click down here and paste to location, you have the ability to paste it in an in a exact location right here. So let me remove all these signature options right here. Again, the, all these squares are going to be for you to be able to select if you, if you so choose. And again, just removing some more of these signature lines right here. Let's move over to um, initial. Initial is going to be another great option here for you. You get your signature and, and initial right here, um, as well as your date stamp. You're going to have a, a date stamp, which again, unfortunately, I've, I've gotten this question uh, every so often um, about date stamps, and uh, there's no real way to kind of like edit this. It's going to give you one sh long string um, that's date stamped when your client signs this document. So it's going to auto populate there for you. And I'm going to scroll down here just so we can kind of get a little bit clearer um, page here for us. There we go. Next, what we have is, um, again, we have a number of different tools and options here for us. So, um, you know, feel free to explore through here. Um, another cool option that I like is that drop down. So, again, dragging over a drop down right here. Yellow means Morgan's going to be the signer. 
um, giving this a click right here, you also have the um, default option. So right down here, um, what do you want these to, to look like? So option one, option two, and maybe option three right here. So now there will be like three options. So when I give this a double click right here, this is in real time what your clients are going to look, uh, what, what they're going to see and what they're going to be able to select right here. If you're using a drop down as well, you also have the ability to say um, what you would like to be the default option. So if one's going to be the default, uh, you can choose that um, as the default accordingly. Um, so um, once we're happy with this, and um, I should at least pull in a signature for myself and a signature for Scott here. Once you're happy with this document, um, again, we have the ability to uh, save this, save and close, so we can get all the way to, up to the point where we're ready to send this out um, and just wait for the word and then hit send over here. Um, you also have the ability to preview this, and this is a cool option for you to be able to see, again, in real time from the client's point of view. So I click preview right here. Up at the top center, you have a desktop view, a tablet view, and a mobile view. And on the left-hand side, you get a view as Scott, or you get a view as Morgan. So you get a view as all of your different signers and what they will see uh, in real time right here. So uh, again, they won't see any of these options to fill in any of that additional information. Uh, if you fill in any, any of those sections, they'll still see that, though. And then again, all your client has to do is click this start tab and it'll move them all the way down to where they need to um, sign and, um, and complete their, their signatures. I'm happy with this, uh, with this form right here, and I know it has a lot of context and I should have picked an easier form for us to view, but uh, taking a look right here, if we're satisfied and we want to send this out for signatures right here on the bottom right hand corner, we can go ahead and hit send. It'll say sending right here. And then it'll make its way over to envelopes right here. And it'll say needs my signature or needs signature. And as you see right here, you can actually click on that envelope and you can see the timeline of who's currently um, in need of signing and who is still waiting for that signature. So uh, pretty cool to be able to, uh, to view that. Now, uh, let me open up a, a new tab here, and let me make my way to uh, my email. And as we kind of, we wait for this to refresh here. As we're uh, taking a close look at, um, okay, it hasn't quite come in just yet, but uh, but I'll keep I'll keep an eye out, and hopefully we'll be able to show you what that looks like from the uh, from the client's point of view. Uh, when it comes in um, but this will this will be where you go to to view where your forms are at in the process of, of being signed right here so again if um, if Morgan if it's been a week since Morgan's um, been sent this uh, e-signature or been sent this envelope uh, you may want to reach back out to Morgan let let him know hey we're still waiting on getting that signed I was wondering if you're able to find it uh, if you need help uh, signing that please let me uh, you also have the ability to, to resend and correct. Um, but again, given our time frame here, we're going to uh, move that over to DocuSign 201 so you guys can kind of see some other cool uh, tips and tricks and, and features. Um, but this will be where you go to, um, to view your signed documents as well. So once they're signed, you're going to have another icon right here uh, that will be green, and I believe it'll say signed right here. So you again, very easily identify which forms um, are which. Um, okay, I think I'm going to pause right there. Uh, if you guys have any additional questions I did not cover, uh, please feel free to uh, shoot them in the chat box down below. For those of you who are watching this at a later date, uh, thank you so much. Uh, please keep an eye out for the DocuSign 201 class. That should show you the, the other half of these uh, cool resources within our DocuSign room. Thank you so much and have a fantastic rest of your day.